Hey guys, what's going on? Justin Boss Nasty Silva here. Getting straight to the point, this is my coaching application video for Optic Gaming at their Optic Team House. Now, even if they don't select me, that's fine. Of course, no sweat off my back. But, I've been watching them. I, of course, have been following their record at the past few majors. And honestly, dude, it's a great group of guys. And I'd love to actually give them and show them easily how they can win consistent tournaments just by making improvements in multiple areas of their game. Hope you guys enjoy three parts we're going to talk about communication, real expectations, and then we're going to end it out with about a two and a half minute gameplay breakdown analysis just to show the conclusion of everything I talked about beforehand. Hope you all enjoy. I don't know where he spawned, how he got into that hill, but that was real weird. I got one back alley, there's another one. <coughs> there's two guys, hey, two guys, hey. One's one's got an AO, there's another one, hey, another one, hey, and one's in the hill, in the hill. Frank yellow, Frank yellow, Frank yellow, Frank yellow. Yeah, another one, hey, another one, hey. He's got that damn scorpion top of the ground. Yeah, we've lost the lead. 25, I'm gonna go over the hill one more time. I'm going back, I'm going to the bottom right to the next one. Uh, J tap. I, uh, I'm making a scorpion class for hills, I swear. That thing is nuts. Yeah, right. Nice job. Try and get hay control. Well, top green, top green, top green. Oh, he's spawned green. They, they spawned yes, they spawned yes, they spawned yes, they spawned yes. One came, I oh, got one hurt at hay. I didn't even think. Oh, I feel stupid now. Yo, one's. Uh, one right to the point. 21 seconds out of this 58 second clip had completely pointless, irrelevant communication that wasn't a call out for a player, a call out to switch or to transition or really just anything that was relevant towards winning the game. So again, if you want to hear these things for yourself on just the communication level that Optic can improve on, please go listen to their listen-ins, watch their streams when they're doing scrims, and focus just on the communication alone, and notice everything that they say that isn't a call-out or a transition call-out or something that's going to help them actually win the game or relevant information to a teammate that they're giving via a call out and you'll notice that this is a consistent thing not only with them but with other teams as well of course we are focusing on them again even the communication level of optic can improve i'll say it once and I'll, i said it once and i'll say it again like we came into this tournament thinking that we were going to have an insanely hard bracket and we weren't sure if we we're going to make it through then we beat evil which was beyond our expectations and we beat Envy, which was beyond, way beyond our expectations. And to be honest with you, I think we kind of fell short with the intensity against Impact. Like, the reason why we do so well at tournaments is because the intensity is just so high. And then we go play Impact, and we know, like, hey, we already did what we wanted to do. We're top six. And I think we kind of just tapered off with our intensity. And I really think that's what happened. What are you going to do? We'll come back tomorrow with the same attitude. And Try to get the W. Came into the tournament not sure if we're going to make it through our quote-unquote insanely hard bracket. Now, first off, this just shows lack of confidence. And additionally, it shows a lack of preparation by them not feeling confident coming into the event. Because usually, if your team is very, very well prepared, meaning that you did a lot of scrims, you did a lot of practice, you did a lot of training, you went over your strategies a lot, and fundamentally, and you have the basics down, you will feel confident coming in to really any tournament, any event that you go into. And in doing so, right, again, that just shows the preparation if you are confident. So really just very disappointed in what was said here. Chris advances, they just beat Unite. Uh, Chris uh, has uh, some pretty good uh, players. So I'm very confident in my team still. Uh, now, now that they've gotten every, all the kinks out of the way, I think that uh, once they got the first loss from, um, from Impact, they now know what it feels like. So they're going to continue to perform the way they're performing up to now uh, and hope, hope, hoping that they'll be able to carry it through competing throughout the rest of the day. Okay, so this clip from Hex really just stuck out to me because he says the kinks are now out of the way after they suffered their first loss in the tournament from Impact. And 
what that just tells me, right, when you say something like that and you are so just literally, you know, as Hex has said in this video, he's always confident in his team. Fantastic thing. But when you always say that and then you follow up with, okay, the kinks are out of the way now, right? Now that saying is, oh, okay, we figured out impact, right? Okay, we're not going to mess up next time, right? We're going to win. We literally, we scrimmed probably eight days in two months. And those eight days, we probably won one hard point series, which is astronomically terrible. Mom's like, calling. It was god awful. And somehow we get to the event and we're just winning every hard point we play. Uh, we're winning Search and Destroy, we're winning CTF. Uh, we're playing really well. I'm already happy that we're top three, but hopefully we can make it to the finals and try and get the championship. Okay, so in the second clip from Nade Shot, right, he specifically tells you they only scrimmed eight days in about the two months, and they only won one hard point series, which, of course, he goes on to say is, you know, astronomically terrible. But... Again, right, this should just prove even more so that there really shouldn't have been any real expectations for this event coming in from Optic because of their lack of preparation and lack of practice leading up to the event, right? Eight days and two months, honestly, that's shit. And I'll tell you this much, right, if I was ever working with a team like that, dude, they would be prepping like every single day leading up to the event to the point of where they're consistently winning games against any and all teams that they play, whether they're pro or am. And that is really how you treat this game professionally, right? And you take it seriously. You treat it like a job and you come in actually preparing, right? Now Optic is starting to kind of give me this idea that, right, they're a big name organization, but their fans obviously want them to win events. But it just seems like the effort and the motivation to win events isn't there. Because if it was there, I, again, would assume, hopefully as anyone else would, that they would be putting a lot more time in to prepare than eight days in two months. Win, uh, the way they have, I mean, they are a championship team for a reason. I mean, we, we know that, that we're down three versus six, so they have to win three, we have to win six, it's going to be tough, but uh, they're prepared to do that, so I'm, I'm hoping for the best. Okay, so the second clip now from Hex, he says, really in a nutshell, they're down, they have to win six, Impact's only got to win three, but his team is prepared to do that now. And I feel like at this point, I really can't take that for granted because Hex is really coming from more of the standpoint of, you know, he has confidence in his team. He loves his team. So his confidence is always going to be 100% for them that they're going to perform well. But then again, from my perspective of watching, analyzing, breaking down gameplay, and just seeing the vast amount of improvements that Optic can really be making, even though they do place well, they could be consistently winning events and tournaments, right? If this, some of these improvements if not even all these improvements or just a bunch of them are made. And so when I hear these words as in, okay, we are now prepared for impact, that just is blows my mind. It does. Uh, but then again, I understand where Hex is coming from. It's just on an actual improvement level to get to that point of where you're going to beat that team and then say with confidence that you're prepared. It just didn't make any sense to me. Uh, our placing as a team, I think, was very well. Uh, a lot of people, even ourselves, I don't think we expected to... You know, be top, the, the competition is insane now nowadays, especially nowadays. So top three, I mean, that's a good finish. We've never replaced outside of top five ever at MLG. So, I mean, we're where we want to be. We just have to clutch up and, and make better plays. Okay, so now we have Merck. A few things I wanted to point out that he said. Number one that stuck out to me, he says they're placing well, which to me just really sounded like a complacent way of putting it. Number two, the competition is insane nowadays. Again, it seems like another complacent way of saying it. And then number three, which I really want to talk about here, he says, where we want to be, they're where they want to be, now we just need to clutch up and make better plays. First off, this is the ultimate complacent thing that you can say, because if he's saying that's where they want to be, what he's now saying is that we want to be where we're not winning a tournament, but we're still placing you know, in the money, right? I mean, really what he's saying is if we're placing in the money, we're winning, right? But even if we don't win an event, it's whatever. Uh, because honestly, then you follow up with now we just need to clutch up and make better plays. First off, you can't say that when Nade Shot already previously said that you guys only prepped for eight days out of a two-month period and you only won one hard point match. And then again, that's not to say if we went really into detail and did more research of how much did you actually prepare during the eight days of so-called practice. So again, 
really all this shows is that Optic came in with a lack of preparation, or better yet, a severe lack of preparation, with so-called unrealistic expectations that were higher than really what they should have had. Placing in the money, I guess, is, I would say, when you only practice eight days out of two months, an unrealistic expectation, even though that is what they put up for themselves. Think about if they actually came into the tournament with preparation with real preparation with a lot of preparation right i'm telling you man if i was working with these guys for uh, a month or whatnot man that is like literally so much preparation to the point of they would win a tournament just after a month of work seriously it's it's that easy they know what they need to do i, I can't i i can't in in my right mind step in and tell them you need to change this or you need to change that uh you know people would tell me you know get up there and hype them up i'm like i, I, I don't do that it's you know i, I have nothing but the most confidence in my team that they know at all times what it is that needs to be done all right guys so for the final clip here this is from hex two things i want to point out number one he says i won't say that they need to change this or they need to change that again right hex isn't a coach so it doesn't make any sense for him to say hey y'all can improve here y'all need to change this to improve right so again it just seems that based off him saying that, it wouldn't hurt for them to take an outside perspective or a different perspective that isn't an internal one, meaning among the five amigos here. Because when you're constantly only taking advice from yourselves, right, you're always going to be limited in your perspectives of seeing things. Just a fact. Next thing is he says you need, uh, when he says people tell him you need to go up there and hype them up, and he says I don't do that. I feel like this is a specific jab at coaches, even if it is subconsciously, because really that's what the majority of people see coaches as, which is more of a hype man. And if that's what he's saying was told to him, then he also views it that way, which, again, doesn't really say a lot for the so-called coaches that call themselves that, aside from myself, of course, in the scene, because that not only just degrades them, but really just shows the true color which is that they're just more of helpers. They're more of hype men, cheerleaders, as I would call them. So that's just what I had to say there. All right, guys, I'm going to be giving you just my own closing notes. If you would like to go look at the analysis breakdown video I did of a match of Optic from MLG Anaheim when they played against Impact, you can go to the top right-hand corner of this video, click Part 2, it'll take you right there. Now, for my own little spiel here, I am completely willing to pack up my stuff, drive to the Optic Team House, stay there at least for a week, <clears throat> on a probation period, of course, most jobs give you 90 days, I'll take a week or a month. If you don't see any improvement, or me benefiting benefiting your team within the first week, I'll pack my shit up and go. And you know what, just for the sake of it, I'll quit esports, and you know maybe go start doing some video game design at college, who knows, right? I just really want to explain and really want to show the extent that I am easily willing to go to to show everyone out there and even benefit Optic themselves that not only can your team vastly improve in many areas, but I would love to show you how you can with literally not changing a lot, uh, if very minimal, for how you guys play and the fast pace play style of Call of Duty that everyone just loves so much. And I can do it effortlessly. And I would just love the opportunity to show you guys how to do that. Then again, even if I'm not selected, even if it, this was all just you know a long shot to begin with, that's fine. Again, it's no sweat off my back. I just love and have a passion for authentic, real coaching, and I want to show people what a real coach can really do for a team, someone who really has an extensive knowledge when it comes to strategy and analysis and breaking down games and being able to spot improvements from a team perspective and on an individual's perspective and tendencies and consistencies that happens because there's so many just areas of strategy and coaching that can really, really help teams. And as, again, this is just the extent I'd be willing to go to, right? I, I would have no problem driving down there, staying with you guys for a week. If you don't see any improvement, I'll leave. If you do see improvement, I would love to extend that maybe to two weeks or a month. And then if you don't see any real improvement on that time, I'll leave again and drive myself back here. I'll do it all for free. Only thing I would just need is just a room, 
and I'll pay for my own food the first week as well. You guys don't have to pay anything for me, right? This is the extent I would love to go to, right, to work with a team like you guys in Optic and really just help you guys improve and advise you and provide constructive criticism on how you guys can just be get so much better and then consistently be winning events because I know the only event that you guys have won as a major is UMG Chicago and none since then. Again, if you're complacent, if you're satisfied with where you guys are placing right now and you only want to internally get advice from each other, you're not looking for anyone on the outside that has a different perspective to advise you guys on that may improve you, that's fine, right? If complacency is where you guys are at, that's cool, right? I had nothing against that, right? I mean, you guys are still placing in the money. Props and kudos to you guys for even being able to do it in the first place. Again, no sweat off my back if, you know... This is just a waste of my own time. Again, I just have a huge passion for this. I love it. And really, I don't know if there's any other coaches out there besides myself that love doing this and do as much for the community as I do effortlessly, freely, and just purely passionately. Again, thank you guys so much for your time. Remember, if you do want to go watch the gameplay analysis breakdown video I did of a match from MLG Anaheim from Optic playing against Impact. Go to the top right-hand corner of this video, click part two. You guys can watch that, which concludes everything that I've talked about up until this point. Again, thank you guys so much. I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.